Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, a revised version of Defense of the Faith. My name is David Chandler, and sitting with me is a very special guest, um, a very special friend of mine. Uh, she is the author of Spiritual Warfare, and she is uh, Candace Paul. Welcome to the show, Candace. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a total. It's a very good pleasure to have you on the show. Um, I'm glad to have you on, and uh, you have written a novel of sorts. Well, you have written a novel. It's not of sorts, but you have, and it's called Spiritual Warfare. Could you tell me a little something about that? Sure, I definitely can. Uh, Well, Spiritual Warfare is a book that I wrote the manuscript a couple of years ago, and I just sat on it a bit. Like, I was a bit hesitant to put it out there. And once I did, everything just started changing. Uh, You know, you kind of have to put aside your fear of rejection and shop it around. And once I did... A publisher contacted me, said that they loved the book, and it was published. So the book is essentially about this tug of war for your soul, the daily decisions that you have to make against these evils that are out there that literally want to pull you closer to hell and keep you away from heaven. So, And that's the overview of what the book is about. Hmm. Sounds very interesting. Uh, I happened to read the first chapter, and it was really, really scary, as a matter of fact. Um, I, could you tell me a little something about the characters, Jade, uh, what, and um, another female character by the name of Sarah Michael? Could you tell me a little, could you tell us a little bit more about that, about those two characters? Sure, definitely. Well, Jade is a demon. Uh, you will find out in the book that he dies and he goes to hell. And while in hell, he's presented with an opportunity to return to earth. And so his soul is tied to hell. There's no second chance here. But as long as he's on earth doing the devil's bidding, acquiring souls, he can stay out of hell. So that's all the incentive he needs. He does not want to be there at all. Um, So he actually is sent to the world, and he encounters Sarah Michael, who is the main character of the story. And she's one of these cosmopolitan women, very smart, very attractive, uh, very career-driven. And she doesn't really care too much about other people. She mainly focuses on herself and what she wants. She has a lot of strained relationships with men, uh, her family. And Little does she know that she's the subject of the spiritual tug of war because God has actually sent a soon-to-be angel to guide her back to him. She has been, you know, away from the faith for a very long time, and this angel is now put directly into her path. So she encounters a demon and an angel and has no idea, and uh, she has to make a very important decision that could bind her to one of their realms forever. So that's what the book's about. Okay. So uh, could you tell me a little more about Jade? Was she was this individual always a demon, or was he a per, did he start off as human and he went to hell, and then now all of a sudden he gets released as a demon? Could you tell us a little bit uh, more about that? Sure. So Jade was once a human. He was once a human being like you and I and uh, several bad decisions that he's made that you'll find out in the book actually leads him to hell. So while in hell, what you find from the book is that all souls have an opportunity, not every soul, but some souls have opportunities to go back to earth and work for the devil, be in his dark army. So you have to go through extensive training in order to become a demon. It's not something that's easily done, as explained in the book, and you'll see why. So he actually passes the test, and he's able to become a demon. 
and so he has the opportunity to go back to earth. But if he doesn't do the devil's work or if he's not doing it well, he'll just be sent right back to hell, and that's what he's trying to prevent. So he will do anything, absolutely anything, to stay on earth for as long as possible, even if it means snatching someone else's soul so he can stay on earth longer. Hmm. That's pretty scary. Uh, Now, what prompted you to write this book? I mean, has this always been something that you've... Now, as far as being an author, anyway, has this always something that you've always wanted to do? Uh, I I know that you have... um, I I know that you've had a pretty... uh, a degree in, in in law and things like that. So did, did this, was this always something that you wanted to do is be an author? Well, I've always loved writing from when I can remember when I was young in elementary school. I just liked to write and get my ideas out on paper. It was one of those things that was kind of relaxing for me and therapeutic. And so when I found out that I actually really liked writing short stories and just writing stories in general, I decided to do it more. And so in high school and college, I just started writing a little bit every day. And then when I got out of college and I had this idea come to me, I just knew that I had to write about it. And that's when I decided to write the manuscript. So really what prompted spiritual warfare was me just taking a step back and looking around. And what I saw I just saw an imbalance in the world. You know, it just it seemed to me that the people who were the bad guys were winning. People who didn't care about others, people who were entirely too selfish. And then I just saw people who were poor and who needed help, not getting the help that they need. And I'm wondering why. Why is everyone seem okay with this? horrible imbalance of wealth and power, you know, and I read a stat at the time that said that literally 3% of the world's population controls 97% of the world's wealth. And I said to myself, why is this? How did this happen? And as I was thinking and as I was growing in my faith and I realized that there is this battle that we can't see, that's what I learned that there's this literal things happening in the background with good and evil. I realize that this has to be a factor. This must be part of the reason why. And so I decided to write a a fiction story about that so I can kind of convey the truth from fiction about what's going on. And uh, that's what prompted it. Hmm. Interesting. So, what would you tell if any what would you tell the individuals well anyone that's listening any aspiring author any aspiring painter or anyone involved in the arts what would you tell them to encourage them to keep them going on the path that they're going especially christians what would you what, what would be the message that you would convey to them well the message that i would convey is that You have to take your time. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks. You can't do this for everyone else. You're going to get people who aren't going to necessarily like what you're doing, and then you're going to get people who love what you're doing. And the idea is to do that for them. The whole focus as a writer should be, what am I doing to, as a Christian writer, what am I doing to glorify God? Um, is my work magnifying him, showing people who he is? And if you focus on that, it will always be a success. It will. It will reach the right hand. And for me, my goal wasn't to, you know, and we, we've talked about this as writers, my goal wasn't to become rich off of a book. My goal was for this book to reach the right hands and hopefully it might impact their lives. Someone might read the book and say, hmm, let me think about what I'm doing. Let me think about my purpose, my faith. And if that's what happens, it would have done its job. So 
by the grace of God, and it's been such a blessing, the book was actually on the bestsellers list, and it was number three on Amazon in religious science fiction. And so that's huge. And a lot of times you won't get all the support that you think from people that should support you. But then there's plenty of other people who will support you, and I'm proof of that. So keep writing, keep doing what God has set out for you to do, and you will see success. Well, that's a wonderful message because um, there are authors that are out, Christian authors anyway, that are out there that is is really looking for that kind of encouragement. Uh, the last question what how long have you been writing i mean this is, this had to have been an, an an arduous journey for you uh well not an arduous but a challenging journey for you what 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 really told you that hey this is really what i wanted to do and and how did this get started how did this journey start very good question uh i think the journey started with me just kind of having ideas. And I said to myself, let me just put these on paper. And that's literally how it started. And I started doing that when I was young, probably around eight or nine years old. I was just kind of jotting thoughts down that I had in a little notebook. And from there, I just said, let me journal. So I I would write journals and things of that nature just to help me work through some of my thoughts and creativity and things like that. But when I realized that I could actually write was in seventh grade when we had a uh, we had a competition and it was a short story competition and I ended up winning first place and at that point I hadn't won anything of significance I thought uh, before and so when I realized that I wrote a story people connected to it people liked it people laughed I said wow you know. Maybe I could do this. Maybe this is something I can do in the future. You know, I don't know what I'm going to write about yet, but maybe I could write a story that makes people think about something. And so when I had that thought, I just had to get it out on paper. And this was a couple of years ago. And so the rest is kind of history now. Hmm. Well, that's a a very interesting story. Uh, I wish you all the blessings in the world. Um. Um, but, thank you uh, so much. Uh, but thank you for 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 joining uh, me in this uh, very exquisite interview. Uh, I hope to hear from you very very soon. Uh, I wish you again all of the blessings in the world concerning your book. Uh, I, I hear that you are working on a sequel to uh, Spiritual Warfare. Am I correct? I am. I am working on a sequel. Hopefully, I should have that finished by the end of the year. Uh, that's, you know, a tentative date, but I'm I'm definitely working on a sequel to Spiritual Warfare. So everyone, look out for it. Watch out for it. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Paul. I, I really appreciate your joining me. Uh, and, again, uh, we, we thank you for being on the show. Uh, and um, for... This is uh, David Chandler, uh, host of Defense of the Faith, uh, signing off. And uh, again, uh, a friend of mine and I and the G.T. Hawkins, are, they, we're, we're going to be uh, commencing on a study on the book of Revelation. This is starting in September. So thank you, Candice, for joining me. And uh, hopefully uh, I get the chance to interview once, interview you once again. Yes, sir. Thank you.